Hi, welcome back to Pia Tech Talk. Today we're going to look, look into a new device bought from Renaissance, the RSS KRA2L1. And this is a touch board. This is how it looks. So on the left here, we have the, RS, uh, the RA2L1 microcontroller and the bigger board here are the touch board with the touch sensors, a rotary sensor and a slider. To start creating a project of this, we need to have the installation done from the very beginning and that is the FSP 2.3.0. In the former installation, I installed both FSP 2.3.0 and also the QA touch library. So take a look in on that if you don't already have. So if we go on to the project, we go new, C++ project, Renaissance RA, next. We we'll give it pro uh, a project name. Here you can see which FSP version you have installed in my version. In my case, it's 2.3.0, which is the requested one. For the board, we're going to select the RSS KRA2L1, which is the one that I just shown you. We go with next, next again, and a bare metal minimal. Uh, we open the perspective. Okay, so now uh, eSquare Studio has opened and opened the FSP configuration menu for us. So you, you have the perspective up here in the right corner. We have the C++ and the FSP configuration and eventually we'll also have the debug perspective. In this case, we can go immediately on to stacks because it's the BSP that is installed. We can see it's installed due to that there are a lot of colors here on the MCU for pins that are already set up. So in the setup, we can see there is only one task, uh, that is the GIO port, IO port driver is here. So we need to put up a new uh, support for the touch. So we go with new stack, and we go for middleware. A uh, common error is that you go with driver and then cap touch, but then you don't get all the software uh, that is available for you. So in this case, we go for middleware and we go for cap touch, cap touch driver. For the driver here, it says that DTC driver for data transmission and for reception recommended but optional. So DTC, DTC is a uh, HAL module uh, for a high level API for, API for data transfer application and uh, the DTC stands for data transfer controller. So we would like to have this to uh, offload the MCU as much as possible. So to enable this, we need to hit this module and we see the settings, the properties in the common parameter here, you support for using DTC. We enable that one immediately it turns red that there is additional configuration needed to do so we hit this one and we add new and a new transfer driver on receiving and a new driver for for the other part so that is what we need to do uh, for setting up the touch libraries so we create this project and we hit proceed that is done. So now we can try to build a project. And we can also change to this perspective instead. So it built without any errors or any warnings. So now is a good time to also do a small uh, change in the debug settings that we need for having this Q-Touch uh, to be working. So we go up here in the debug and there is a, a small button down. We go to the debug configuration. We go down here to Renaissance GDB hardware debugging and underneath there, there is a small tab. We hit that one and we go under the start up 
tab. And here we have a small uh, break set breakpoint, so it stops immediately at the main. But we also need to hit this one, resume. We hit apply, then we can just hit close. So that changes set. Now we go up to Renaissance views, Renaissance QE, and we go up to cap touch main sensor tuner. Now there is a small module open for us. Uh, preparing us for this touch setup. And there is some steps, one, two, three, four. So we take it in turns. So to prepare a project that uses the touch interface, first of all, we need to select which project. And we use the one that we have created. And then we need to create a new configuration because we don't have anyone. Here we have a small menu and we have we're going to set up three buttons. So we click the button and we hit one, two, and three buttons. And we also need a shield pin, so we hit the shield. So now we need to double click on the first one and this open up. And it says uh, button zero. And what we can do now is to mimic the, the silk screen on the layout, we can have the same name, so TSB1. And we need also to uh, tell uh, which electrode, which pin we are using. So in this case, we have the TS11 connected to that pin. And there is a resistance of 560 ohms uh, in series with a pin. So we do this with all um, of them. That is TSB2, and that one is connected to pin TS10. And here we have TSB3, and that is connected to pin TS09. And we also have the shield, and that is actually connected to TS00. So that is correct from the very beginning. Okay. Uh, so that is done. We create this one. And when we create it, we can see that this, if I can get hold of it like that, so. Uh, so we see that the, we have a configuration zero and we have three buttons and an electrode shield and we have the individual numbers B1, B2, B3 and the shield zero and which pin they are connected to. So now we have done these steps and it's also now in this uh, configuration. So the next thing is the tuning. QA will automatically perform tuning process for each touch sensor to connect to the target board. To do this, we need to have the emulator and uh, the J tag connected to the board. So here we have the RSSK RA2L1 board. And this board don't have any built-in J tag debugger interface. So if you want to look into my other video on how to use an RS RA6 board, as an AJ tag interface, I have posted that before. So in this case, I'm using the RA6 board as a J tag interface to the RSSK board. So now we go back to the tuning, and the next step is connect the target board. We have done that. To start the tuning, follow the instructions on the dialog. Start tuning. So this automatic start, automatic tuning. And it says here it does some measurements and we do not touch the sensors at the target board. So now the automatic tuning process would like me to press TSB3. 
that value is sampled and now we touch the TSB2. That value is sampled and now we touch the B1. So that is done. Now we can see the there is a threshold value on all buttons and we can continue the tuning process. So now we have done this step, the advanced uh, the tuning, and now we can output the parameters. So up here there was a new subfolder called QA generated and here we have the values. So now the next one is to show the sample for the coding. So here it generates some sample code for us and we can output that to a file. That output file is now in the QA touch sample.c. So this is the file that just got configured. In this file QA touch samples we have a main call called QE touch main and we would like to call that routine from our application. So we go into the source file and the hell entry C which are, is our main file and we put an extern Like that, so that is declared. So in this hell entry, this is our main hell entry file. So to do only add your own code here. So we will call this function. Like so. And then we go back to the file that we have called for. And here is a it says to do open your own, add your own code here. So that is where the RM touch get date data get. And here I have prepared some code. So here we have some added code. So it asks if button status and the config mask for the TSBS1, B1, uh, or the B2, or the B3. If any one of those are valid, then we will put the pin right, pin level high on the uh, BSP port 3, pin 5, and that is an LED on the board. So whenever we hit any of these buttons, the LED will lit up. So we try to build this project. Zero errors, zero warnings, and we try to debug it. And we hit run and run once more. And we now see that it's indicating it's running. Now, so whenever I'm trying to touch one of the send buttons that we have done the one, two or three, there is a LED that should be lit up here on the board. So there is the LED. We can also do some debugging if we go to the GE touch samples. We highlight the variable button status. We right click on that one and we add watch expression. You can find it up here in the expression. We right click on that one and we enable the real time refresh. We can highlight it and uh, do also what time period we should have it refresh. So we can intern interval there and 100 milliseconds could be correct. So if I hit the TSB1. I get the value 4, and if I hit the TSB2, I get the value 2, and the TSB3, I get the value 3. And if I hit the B1 and the B3, we get the value 5, so you can hit more than 
one uh, at a time. We can also go back to this uh, flow here. We came to the show samples, but we can also do some monitoring. So we can show views. And if we go up here to enable monitoring, so we enable the, the monitoring of it and we can hit. You see here the TSB free. So in this cap touch uh, status chart, here I select which electrode I would like to look at. If I would like to look at BS1, B1, B2, or B3, in this case B1, then I see the count value, the reference value, and the threshold. And the threshold is where it detects uh, the difference and uh, if there is a press or not a press. So if I press a button, you see there is a red bar that indicates it's a the press button and as soon as I then it goes over the uh, the threshold the green bar and then there is a press on the button even now I'm just outside the button so I, I'm I don't have a very firm press but still it detects now I'm really over the button down here you can also have multiple so you can have be a one two and also the three so you can see all waveforms at the same time how they interact with each other So we successfully managed to do a bare metal project with the RSSK RA2L1 board and also implement the touch sensing library, uh, get it set up, uh, configure the electrodes and also do some uh, low level uh, or light level debugging and just showcase some of the features and uh, tools available for you. Hope you liked it and uh, if you liked the video please like and subscribe and hope to see you in the next video. Bye!